Hi there, I'm Hector Bernal from the technology team. Thanks for checking out the physiology module today. Today, Dr. Mary and Dr. Marshall are going to be doing some cool dissections over in the lab. You'll see me from time to time through the video to share some interesting facts about the dissection. Let's head over to the lab and see what they're up to. Okay, um, I am Dr. Mary Patterson and this is Dr. Sylvester Marshall. And we're going to walk you through um, dissecting the brain. This is a sheep brain, which is a lot different than a human brain in that it's quite a bit smaller. A human brain, and I'm going to show you with my hands, my brain is about that big. So you can see that it's quite a bit smaller than my brain, right? And then uh, Dr. Marshall has a sheep brain too. And could you tell us what this is, this sheath around here? So the covering over the sheet brain, in, in all brains, is called the, the dura, which is a thick covering that covers over the brain. Um, you can see underneath the covering is the, the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Uh, back here is the spinal cord. And fl flipping it upside down, we see uh, beyond the spinal cord we have the, the start of the brain stem, where, we have the where it starts to swell, we have the medulla and then we have the pons. Towards the front, um, you can see that there is an X crisscross, which is the optic chiasma. Um, going this way, the nerves go to the part of the brain that uh, processes visual. Um, so my, my right eye, that message goes to my left brain, and my left eye goes to my right brain. Now, what is important about the brainstem in sleep is that while you're asleep, while you're in REM sleep, this actually paralyzes your body, paralyzes the um, voluntary muscles of your body. And so that's important so that you don't move during your sleep or hit anything or fall out of your bed. Okay. So in this video, we're going to be doing the dissection and identifying some of the important structures in the brain that are involved in sleep such as the pineal gland and the hypothalamus um, and the thalamus. So we're gonna cut this off. Now this dura, it does go also over your spinal cord and it can get infected and you might've heard of that. It's called meningitis. And so it's important to, to, to protect the brain, right? And there is a meningitis vaccine that most people take before they go to college. I know my daughter had to take the meningitis vaccine to protect her from that. Now I accidentally took off the brainstem as well, but that's okay. So you can see how Marshall is cutting that off real gently, kind of like peeling a potato. Now he's opening the hemispheres. Like separating the left and the right hemispheres. Because we're going to look for the pineal gland. And so the pineal gland, um, unlike other structures in the brain and the body, doesn't have a left and a right uh, side. It, it's a midline yeah, structure. It and as I open up the brain a little bit. You can see how easily the hemispheres separate. can see right here the uh, pointer is marking the pineal gland which is the structure in the brain that releases melatonin which helps induce sleep. Below the pineal gland we have the superior and inferior colliculi which are involved in helping to orient the brain to auditory, like, um, visual as well as uh, sounds. And then down here we have the cerebellum, which is involved in uh, motor coordination. So if somebody's drunk, the cerebellum is affected. Right. And uh, the cerebellum is affected, and so people lose their balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I cut mine in half. So you can see here, this is called the corpus callosum right here, this white part. And that's the only part that connects the two sides of the brain. So 
Dr. Marshall's gonna cut his in half and show you where the um, thalamus and hypothalamus is. I'm making sure to cut right down the center to preserve the structures. All right, so looking at one or both of the half sections of the brain, as Dr. Patterson mentioned, we have the corpus callosum, which is the connection between the left and the right hemispheres. Um, again, we have the spinal cord, and where it starts to swell is the medulla oblongata and the, the pons. Um, the cerebellum is very uh, neat, cut in half. Uh, it has this root-like root -like, um, design uh, called the arbor vitae, or tree of life. Um, Looks like cauliflower. Yeah. Um, let's see. If we could see the uh, thalamus and hypothalamus are kind of difficult to see because they're not like they big are. structures. <laughs> yeah, it, it helps if they're stained, but this round structure right here is, is the thalamus. It's pretty large. Um, and the hypothalamus, it's not well... Um, demarcated, but it's it's in this region. So what does hypo mean? It means below. below. Right. And so this part right here, this is the frontal lobe, and that's where we do like math and decision making and thinking. And you can see that in the sheep, it's, it's not going to be as big as a human. They don't do as much math as we do, counting sheep perhaps. Okay, and what's interesting here, if you can see this, is you see all these bulges and these um, ridges. The bulges are called gyrus, and the, the creases are called um, sulcus. And the reason we do that, the reason for that is to increase the surface area of the brain. Because if the brain was smooth, it, it wouldn't have as much surface area. It would be too big for our skulls. Right, and we would fall over a lot probably. <laughs> you know, like babies have really big heads because their heads don't grow very much. So, so what we separated here is called the central sulcus, and it just kind of came apart very easily. Yeah. And then Dr. Patterson uh, mentioned the frontal lobe in this region. Um, in a little bit uh, towards the back of the brain, uh, or moving towards the back of the brain, we have the parietal area, which is a, a very large area of the brain. Um, and then back here we have the, uh, um, the occipital lobe, um, which is where uh, uh, different, like visual stimuli are, are processed. Okay, so I'm gonna cut my frontal lobe in half. It's actually the sheep's, and see what we see in there. And wow, you can see the, the white matter and the gray matter pretty well. Mm -hmm. The white matter and the gray matter. So the gray matter is actually where the, the neuron cell bodies are at. They're at the surface of the brain. And then they have long projections um, uh, coming off of the cell body, which are called axons, which are in the white matter. And they all, all the axons come together and, and become nerves, which are like electrical cables. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in our Google Classroom and we're gonna have discussion. So if you have any questions at all about our dissection or the brain, um, we're gonna have a discussion about it and we can't wait to hear what, what you have to say and the questions you might have. Hello again. Thanks for joining us today through our dissection of the brain. Hope you enjoyed those quick facts throughout the video. We'll have a few discussion questions over in our Google Classroom and we can't wait to hear from all of you. This has been the Physiology Module and hope everyone is healthy and practicing social distancing. If you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to us.